guys welcome to my channel today we are going to learn about the fabrication of buckle cannon retractor now this buckle cannon retractor is used for distal movement of cannon or we can say the minimal distal movement of cannon that is desired so for its fabrication we require a marking pencil we require a marker pen then we require a universal plier then we require a hard wire cutter now for its fabrication we use a 0.7 mm or 0.6 mm of wire so we are going to learn on an ideal cast so we are going to learn its fabrication on 2 3 so let's begin so first thing that we need to do is we need to do some markings so on the buckle aspect of the canine we divide the tooth into 3 halves so this is the distal third then this is the middle third and finally the medial third so now let's divide the tooth into the incisal third the middle third and the cervical third so now where would our active arm would be resting is first the helix would be just between the premolar and the molar and it should be as high as possible then going covering this helix our active arm should be in the middle between the incisal and the middle third so this would be the point where our active arm would be and it will go and engage in the embrasure between the canine and the lateral incisor and the retentive arm would follow the embrasure distal to the first premolar and then cover the palatal aspect and finally the palatal tissue so this would be the markings of the buccal canine detector so now the wire that we are going to use is 0.6 mm or even the 0.7 mm of wire can be used so the length could be around 6 cm or 7 cm next step is to straighten up this wire so we engage the one end of this wire in the flat base of the universal plier and with the help of our finger and thumb pressure we straighten up this wire as you can see over here So now we can cut the slide bend of this wire that was engaged in the flat base of the universal plier and now we get a completely straight wire as you can see over here Now in the next step we need to do a marking so we mark a central point at this wire where our helix foot begin So now we will use the peak or the rounded peak of the universal plier and engage this central point and begin to form a helix. So we will bend both the ends of the wire simultaneously to form a helix and over one wire over the other wire will be used to form a complete rounded helix with equal pressures on both the arms as you can see over here. this will form a uniform helix covering the rounded peak uh, or the narrowest peak of the universal plier now in the next step we are going to see its adaptation on the cast and begin with our second marking where our active arm would bend and engage the canine now this 
first point we have marked is the active arm that is going to engage the buccal aspect of the canine. Now we need to give a sharp 90 degree bend engaging it in the square beak of the universal plier and we need to keep the plane same. Plane should not be distorted and give a sharp end like this. So now we check its adaptation on the canine. So our active arm, the uh, one end of this active arm should rest in the embrasure. Uh, medial to the canine so we need to give another marking so this would be the marking where our active arm would end so we need to cut this extra amount of wire Now the next thing that we need to do is we engage the one end of this active arm in the sharp rounded beak of the universal plier and give a sharp rounded bend and again in the middle rounded part we engage uh, this uh, component so that we follow the counter of the canine and now check its adaptation on the cast. So it should follow the contour of the canine and the end should at the end of the active arm should be engage into the embrasure as you can see over here between the lateral incisor and the canine. Now we need to go over the retentive arm. Now we need to do a marking after checking its adaptation on the gas where the retentive arm would go into the embrasure between the two premolars. So this is that marking. Now we will give a bend so that it goes into the palatal adaptation. Now engaging this point in the beak of the universal pair we give a sharp bend. Now this sharp bend. Yeah, now we check its adaptation on the parietal aspect. Now it is perfectly adapted and well into the embrasure. And now we can begin with our palatal adaptation of this retentive arm. Now again we give a marking for the palatal adaptation. And this marking will help us in engaging in the palatal aspect of the canine tractor. So with the beak of this plier again, we give another sharp bend. Cutting the extra amount of wire of the retentive arm, we need to form the tag engaging the end of the retentive arm in the beak of the pair and forming the tagum part. So this is the tagum that we need to form and we need to do slight adjustments and follow the counter of the pallet and let's set its adaptation on the cast now. So now we need to do one more marking so that we form a perfect palatal adaptation of this retentive arm. So now at this point we are going to engage into the beak of the plier and begin a bend. Now this bend will help in uh, accurate adaptation of the palatal aspect of the canine retractor. Now you can see over here that our retentive arm is also perfectly adapted in the palatal aspect.
lastly we need to stabilize this buckle canine detector so that we can check its adaptation in all the aspects so once we stabilize it we can easily check its adaptation this is the palatal aspect now this is the buckle aspect of the canine detector so let's magnify it and see how its adaptation should be finally so this is the buckle aspect of this canine detector with the active arm following the counter of the canine then the parietal aspect of the canine detector then the helix as you can see over there so this completes our buckle canine detector and how it should look like thanks for watching this video bye bye